Hello and welcome to Code Sketched. If you have worked with React, you might have seen this HTML like syntax and got confused about what it was. It seems like there are pure HTML tags and then there are also user defined tags. There's also some stuff that looks like a JavaScript expression. But what are these curly braces doing in the middle of HTML? Well, that's called JSX or JavaScript syntax extension. It's an integral part of what makes React so special and in today's video, we will learn more about it. In the era before React, the best practices for separation of concern dictated that the HTML, the corresponding styles and the JavaScript all be placed in separate files. These seem to allow for better maintainability and an overall satisfactory developer experience. But React thought of challenging the way things were being done. When React came in, instead of separating the concerns based on the type of code that was written, it decided to go for a separation based on functionality. And thus, different files were created based on the functionality they provide. These units were called as components and the HTML, CSS and JS for a particular component was placed in a single file. If we take the example of this user interface, we can see that it can be broken down into these fundamental functional units. We can see a title component, an input box component with a button and the individual item component. Also notice that the item component can just be defined once and used twice or more based on the requirement. This meant that the reusability of user interfaces skyrocketed, but it came with an issue of its own. Something like this was never done before and a new way to do it needed to be found. And that is how JSX came into existence. To enable developers write their markup, styles and functional logic all in a single file. Do note that JSX expressions get converted into normal JavaScript function call at the time of compilation, which we'll see later in this video. Before that, let's check out some JSX code magic. We can define a normal JavaScript variable and assign some markup to it like so. But the true power of JSX start to show up when we want to use dynamic variables. We can create a variable called name and reference it inside of JSX using this curly bracket syntax. Basically, any valid JavaScript can be placed inside of the braces, even a function. So we can define a function that returns the string code sketched and call that function inside of the curly braces like so. This also resolves to the same final result, hello code sketched. In the previous example, we looked at the h1 tag but did not pass any attributes to it. But similar to HTML, that is possible too. We can pass string values for an attribute like we are passing this URL as the value for href. In addition to that, even JavaScript expressions can be passed as attributes like this example where we are passing the profile image URL as the value for the src attribute. Also, notice that there are no quotes around the expression. It is just wrapped inside of the curly braces. With JSX, we can also render elements inside of other elements. The element placed inside of another can be called as the child. When there are no children, a JSX tag can be closed with the backslash and arrow bracket. But when we need to have children, they can be placed between the opening and the closing tag, similar to HTML. Now, let us see how all this JSX gets compiled and understood by React. Let us say that we defined a JSX element like this, an h1 tag with a string as the child. At compile time, this gets replaced by a call to react.create element that looks like this. The function call gets passed the type of the element, which is h1 as the first argument, the attributes passed to the element as the second argument, and the children as the third. But do note that these two pieces of code are exactly identical and produce the same results. You could even skip the JSX part and write your code as these instances of create element if you are a 10x engineer and it will work exactly the same. No matter what way you define the element, it will finally get translated into this object representation that looks something similar to this. This is a rough approximation of the actual object, but it is this object that React uses to perform reconciliation and finally render the DOM in the browser. If you want to understand exactly how React does the rendering part, check out this previous video on our channel. That's it for today's video. See you in the next one.